So it's going to be all about keeping off the curbs in this car. This car is tiny. The curb is nearly as big as us. <laughs> there you go. Oh, God, there's a curb. <laughs> I told you not to touch the curbs. Jimmy here and welcome back to another video. So last week I made a video driving the Praga R1 in sim in a Seto Corsa for a couple of reasons really. First reason was to sort of, I guess, introduce you. you know, introduce lovely chat, lovely YouTube people, degenerates, basement dwellers, to introduce you to the car that I'm going to be driving this year in the Brick Car Championship, which is still incredibly weird to say out loud i'm not sure i'm going to get used to that and also to give you all a little bit of an insight as to what i'm doing to help prepare myself for jumping in this car for the first time there is going to be more content around that by the way more kind of sim preparation and i might even do a video on the physical stuff i'm doing to sort of get myself fitter to hop in the car if you guys are interested in it of course i don't really do that sort of content so i'm not really sure if you'd like it anyway let me know let me know if you would but as is always the way whenever i put up a video about any car specifically there was just a ton of comments of people asking the same thing jimmy how fast will it lap the Nordschleife? but to be fair to you i'm also kind of interested to see how fast this praga will go around the greenhouse so i thought hell we have the sim version i've got a simulator right here i've got vr let's see how fast the praga r1 can lap the nordschleife because why the hell not just a quick reminder if you are unfamiliar with the r1 it's powered by a turbocharged two liter renault engine running about 380 horsepower on the highest available map the car weighs just a hair over 600 kilograms and has enough downforce to stick itself to the roof at 130 miles per hour so it's definitely a serious bit of kit so back in the cockpit of the uh, the Praga R1 at a very snowy uh, Nürburgring. Um, now I'm going to do what I sort of used to do back in the day with these challenges, which is basically do an out lap and then the flying lap, and then that's the lap that I record and keep. So um, I guess <laughs> let's go get on with it. A couple of little things before we sort of get going, just to get people up to speed, I suppose. Um, I am using a different physics set for this car than is available in the stock game makes it a bit quicker sort of brings it up to line into what the car is uh, like nowadays as compared to what it was uh, when it was a naturally aspirated car and that means that we have that 380 brake horsepower we've got a bit more aero as well i'd say that this car perhaps is a little bit quicker in a straight line than it is in real life judging from onboard videos um, but otherwise it's pretty close to what i can expect when i get in a driver's thing at the start of march so we're going to just sort of start off by taking it somewhat easy sort of learning where the edge of the grip is through here for example fifth gear come over the top of the flute pads through the first right hander and then down here so it's going to be all about keeping off the curves in this car this car is tiny the curb is nearly as big as us <laughs> nice down the bottom here nice and smooth there you go oh god there's the curb <laughs> I told you not to touch the curbs. But I gotta say, I absolutely love getting to try this car in, in VR and getting an idea of just how big everything is. I said that in the last video. Just getting an idea of spacing and what you can expect when you actually drive this thing in real life is so valuable, especially for someone uh, like me who's not had the chance to drive the car yet. And with the current sort of world situation, it also helps there as well. Rebel Tree, you have conformed. Good job, man. It's been a while since I spoke to you, Rebel Tree. Do you know I'm a brick car driver now? Yeah, I didn't know why they gave me a drive either. <laughs> it's weird, that. I tell you what, if you had told me when I first did a uh, hot lap video that I'd be driving in real life at any point, I would have slapped you and called you stupid. But now I've got Bailey to do that for me, which is fine. So really, the car in Sim is, from what I hear, pretty much how it is in real life in that it's quite approachable. You can sort of just jump in it and be comfy a bit straight away. A bit of understeer there. Good to note that for our fast lap. God, I really miss this place. It was so cool coming here for the Gran Turismo events back in the day. I hope that we can do it again soon. Now uphill, I have changed the gearing, so the car should be, uh, we should be just about touching a limiter in sixth gear going down the back straight, which is about 290 k's, which are, again, a bit quicker than this car is in real life, I think, but still quite fun to imagine doing that. Bravery corner. Yeah, that, that can probably be, that, that can be fifth and a bit more of a throw in, I think. Now the carousel. How's the uh, Praga react to this? Oh, it's quite bumpy. It's not quite made for this sort of surface. Oh, there you go. <laughs> And now for this last section. This last section is going to be an absolute blast in this car. The car's got a little bit of slip to it, which means that you can really attack through here if you're feeling spicy. B 
bit of understeer through there. A bit too fast in. Nice and solid through here. Bit bumpy. Car's not quite set up ideally for it. Probably could have run a bit softer, but in the spirit of sim racing being accessible and jumping in and plugging and playing, we're going to just do it this way. Can we keep it? Oh, God. That was proper in the air. I was all four wheels off the ground now. I was going to say, can we keep it flat over that jump? But you can. I wouldn't recommend it on the flying lap, though. That's going to be a, a new uh, set of suspension, please, Mr. Praga. Let's wind ourselves up for the flying lap. Now, this is my second attempt at the flying lap because I got a phone call halfway through the first one. Time to see how good these brakes are, I suppose. Down the bottom here. Try and spot our braking zone. That will do. Try and keep in a straight line. Very nice and tip her in. Now we've got quite a bit of downforce in this car, but it's not infinite, so we've got to be careful with how we treat it on throttle as well. Over the start finish line, start our lap, and then brake just before we go over. You can see the uh, black lines from my last attempt. Softly on exit, watch out for that curve, it's so scary. Now we've got to turn in nice and early for Hatson back in this car. So get it turned in. Still turning too late. A little bit of push through there, but it's okay. Very bumpy through this first section, so we've got to be nice and careful on the throttle through here. Nice and smooth, no sudden movement. Stay off those curbs as well, this car is low. It's stiff, as you've probably seen by it, just bumping around. So we've got to be careful of these curbs. Just touch one there and exit a bit scary. Second gear now down the hill. Straight line it, go. Throttle open. Have you come now to the flu plats. Got enough downforce that this car just about sticks to the floor over the top. Keep it mashed in sixth there, bit of a lift, and down to fifth. Turn her in, aim for that second apex nice, and let her just float out. And again, back on the front, all the way down the hill now. Great section of circuit, especially in this Praga. Speed just winding up 280k, it's nearly 285 as we come over the brow of the hill. Just a dab of the brake for confidence, turn her in, back on the throttle, and then big straight line braking as we come now down towards the compression at the bottom of the hill. Bit of a slide next to there, get a bit too enthusiastic on the front. Well, it happens, it's a fun car. And now gravity gives us a bit of a freebie down here. And in real life, this little bit at the bottom of the circuit right here, the compression, bam, that would be a big hit in this car, given how stiff it is. But luckily we're in Sims, so we get away with it. Just nibbling the curb there. No nibbling, Jimmy. Oh, there you go. Rear end of the car dancing. The brake bias is quite far back. In this car, it's how I've said it. Kind of enjoy it, so it's good. Hello, Rebel Tree, it's me, I'm back! Yeah, I know, I did a lap before, but blame Veronica. And now, speed through here, back on the throttle, nice and early. Uh, these are the corners where you can make them lose a lot of time if you're not careful, so we're gonna try and, there you go, nice, just sort of slot it through the corner. The idea is not to fight the car too much. It likes to go through smoothly. Doesn't like to be wrestled through corners. There, I had to get off the throttle a little bit earlier than I wanted to, just because getting on the kerb. Now miss it, miss. Let's do it right. That'll do. Oh, just try a bit too much throttle there. Car started to get loose, but very recoverable, which is good. First gear down the bottom here. Let's mat it in first, second, and third gear, and then up to fourth. And again, look to our braking spot down the bottom here. So easy to overshoot this, so we're going to brake a little bit earlier than I usually would. There you go, nice and wide through there, carry the speed. Oh, so bumpy, and up here as well. Look at the wheel, look at the thing bouncing around the circuit. This car is not made for this track at all. That's why it's even more fun to come and drive it around here. Sit gear through the kink, no help fifth, I think. Now for the corner that I never ever get right, ever, ever, ever. Oh, I got it right. Wow. <laughs> anyway, now we go uphill. Using that two litre Renault engine behind us. All the boost, 380 horsepower, pushing us up the hill to 60 k's there. We're still accelerating in sixth gear right in the power band. Might even hit 270. Time for the bravery corner though, which is uh, spooky in any car. So we're going to be nice and safe. Down the fifth gear, turn her in. Back on the throttle, nice and early. Just a little adjustment through the corner there, trying to keep the car as straight as possible. And then again through there, just again, just on the on the brake a little bit. We're going to brake a bit earlier here. There's some marks on the road there from some guy before, definitely not me. And now we go up the hill towards the carousel. Important to kind of respect the carousel here. So, second gear. Oh, it do be bumpy. It do be. It do be bumpy. And then we're through. Nice. And now we go up the hill. We know we've got to be a bit more careful in this corner on entry, turning early and nice. We'll go fourth, probably going to third through this section as well. No, we'll keep fourth for now, use the torque. 
Now we go to third. Watch out for those curves. They're so sketchy in this car, man. They're so tall in this car. It's a prototype, basically. They're not made to go near curves like this. It likes flat curves. This one's okay. Oh, Piff Path. Piff Path on that one. No, it's not Whipperman, sorry. Well, Piff Path is Spark. <laughs> I'm lost in my brain, Bono. Just really easy down here. Not pushing the car too much because of the bumps. The bumps make it a lot harder for the sets than you want it to be. A little bit wider next to that. Don't tell Mr. Praga. Don't tell him. It's all right. Now, YouTube corner. And again, heavy on the brakes up here. Trying to turn around late, trying to carry the speed in, but we're just scrubbing a little bit there. It's a little bit too late of a turn, and it happens. And then struggling a bit on traction over the rise, but putting it down eventually. We're going to break a tiny bit before this jump, because we know we're going to take off. There you go. Fifth gear on the way in. Aim for the second apex. Just about meet it, meet it. And then we go to fifth early. Down the hill. So careful down this part of the circuit, because the car is moving all over the place because of the speed of it. And all the bumps and all the uh, camber. Really this difficult part of the track. Break early here, hug the inside. Staying to the right so we can get a nice run into this left-hander. Fourth gear, could be third there, but fourth is okay. And then we go into the worst corner in the circuit. I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. We're out, just about. Oh, what a lap. And now, for the top part of the course, trying to find my place to get back on the front and stay on it. That will do. And open her up now, and now we just could just try and compose ourselves for that last big braking zone. We're going to be somewhere just over six minutes. We come onto the back straight at 5.45, 5.50. Now again, look at that speedo. 278, 279, 280. Still going. Come on, little Braga. Saw you, baby. This is a bit, yeah. Have to wait. And now we prepare ourselves for the big break at the bottom. We can still mess the lap up, so we've got to be careful. Heavy brakes. Big bump there on the wheel as we hit the curb. Nice and smooth though. Trying to just be careful of that power application. So easy to even get it loose now. Across the line. And the time is a 6.27.7. A long way under a seven minute lap. And even under six and a half minutes. This car is feckin' rapid. And for some reason, I'm driving it next season. Well, this season. Oh, man. Whew, what a ride. Oh, man. I tell you what, sweaty after that. VR, do be like that. I, I always forget that putting this box of heat in your head makes you sweat. It's it's weird, that, isn't it? But I hope you guys enjoyed watching the lap. 6.27 is pretty quick. Makes me feel a little bit nervous about getting in the car in real life, but I'm, I'm sure it's going to be awesome, and I really can't wait to get behind the wheel of this thing. If you guys enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it. Of course, if you tap that like button, you can subscribe as well as you want, because we are on our way, slowly, to 700,000 subscribers, which is a lot of boys. <laughs> as always, a massive thank you to the patrons and members of the channel for supporting me and allowing me to live my dream. It is a mad life, this, and I am very fortunate to be able to live it, and I couldn't do it without you guys at home. So take care, have an awesome day, and I'll see you all next time.